I wonder if you noticed how Jesus had answered a question with another question in today's gospel. When asked why he and his disciples did not do fasting as often as John and the Pharisees and their disciples did, ang sagot niya, can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? Well, if you put that more simply, can you invite guests to attend a wedding reception? And then you tell them walang pagkain kasi kailangan mag-fasting. Can you do that? Of course, you can. But I wonder if you can get people to attend kung ganyan ang wedding reception. What are you inviting people for anyway? if not to celebrate. Maybe the question is not can you, but should you? Alam nyo, some people do not like Christianity because they think it is a killjoy faith. Some people caricature Christianity as a religion that glorifies suffering and death as a belief system that promotes a permanently penitential, ascetical, or even a joyless existence. Actually, kahit naman si St. Augustine, he thought this way about Christianity before he got converted to the faith. When he finally embraced the Christian faith, St. Augustine regretted having done it too late already. Kaya sabi niya sa confessions, late have I loved you. And that's when he discovered that the Christian faith was, as a matter of fact, about celebrating life, about living it to the full, about experiencing heaven already on earth. Of course, we know that there are really those people who think of life in this world as nothing but punishment or as a valley of tears. They spend time living a miserable life and making other people miserable, not because Jesus taught them to do so, but simply because they're sick. We have to accept that there are many sick expressions of Christianity. Sabi ko nga, not all about religion is about God. Some of it can also be an expression of a collective neurosis or a collective psychosis. Sabi nga ng mga psychiatrists. Perhaps this is the reason why St. Paul is saying in our first reading today that his primary role as an apostle is to be a steward of the mysteries of God, meaning a caretaker who is entrusted with an understanding of the faith as it should be lived, a life-giving kind of faith, a faith that liberates, a faith that gives hope, a gospel that brings joy. When the apostles fail in their stewardship, people are more easily misled by all kinds of Christianity that have nothing to do with Jesus Christ and the gospel that he proclaimed. You know, you count the number of times in the gospels that Jesus is portrayed eating or drinking or enjoying himself in a table fellowship, and you'll be surprised. Marami. John says in chapter 2 of his gospel, that Jesus and his disciples had enjoyed the wine so much at a wedding banquet in Cana, in Galilee. What happened? The couple hosting them ran out of wine. And Jesus was pressured by his mother to do something about it. And remember, St. Luke tells us Jesus loved to visit Bethany to enjoy a good chat with 
Mary of Bethany, and a good meal prepared by her sister, Martha. He also tells us about Jesus reclining at table in the house of a Pharisee one day and allowing a massage attendant to give him a foot spa. And he sometimes even invited himself to dinner in the house of tax collectors like Matthew and Zacchaeus. I think Jesus took very seriously the famous lines in chapter 3 of Ecclesiastes about the wisdom of knowing the proper timing for every affair under heavens. Ecclesiastes 3, there is a time for every affair under the heavens. And the kind of disposition that every situation in life calls for. Well, you know, you don't do fasting when you should be feasting. And neither should you be feasting when you should be fasting. May panahon ang mga bagay-bagay. There is a proper time for one or the other. And the wisdom that it takes to know the opportune time, the right occasion, or the proper situation to do certain things is part of the duties of the apostle as a steward of the mysteries of God.